So you just kind of have to be here to hear stuff. Amen. It's going to get to the point where you're going to have to be here to hear it. Because if you say anything against the New World Order, they, the New World Order owns Google. Y'all didn't know that? That's theirs. So we can't be protesting, oh, my rights. That's theirs. And I want to keep my rights to my house and my yard. See? So I ain't protesting for the, against censorship or none of that because I want to be able to censor. You come in my neighborhood, I want to be able to censor. Get out of my yard. I want to be able to decide that you don't belong in my yard because I own that yard. Amen. So I can't get mad at these folks. They're just doing what sinners do. They don't want the truth on their platforms. That's fine. Let them do whatever. We, well, I mean, we were just lucky to even be on there. I should have been canceled a long time ago. So I, you know, so if that's what they want to do and, you know, we just have to abide by those rules because that's their platform. Amen. You can't get mad at what HBO is showing. Don't subscribe to it. It's just a shame the stuff that's coming through the TV. Get rid of your TV. That's TV. That's the world. Isn't the world supposed to act like the world? I know that's a different take. Somebody want to protest everything. What you protesting the world for? The world is the world. The Bible said all that is in the world is the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, and the what? Pride of life. So the world is going to do those things. Amen. So just fall out. Look at somebody and say, fall out of love with the world. Fall out of love with the world. You're trying to change the world. The Bible already told you what the world was going to do. It says it's going to hate you. Because it hated him. Y'all a boring crowd today. Everybody just, what happened? Mess with folks TV, boy. Amen. But it's just foolishness. It's, it's what it's going to be. So certain things I, that I preach in here, I can't post. So you just have to come to church. Amen. Amen. So don't. Hey, hey. Adamandbeliever.com forward slash love him with your life for. You know, I've been married longer than I was single. Amen. I was single for 22 years and I've been married to this woman for 30 years. Amen. And we having a good run. We went, hey man, we went out last night just hanging out and looking at each other and like, you know, I mean, we don't really have to do stuff. We haven't done everything. So we don't have to take a trip nowhere. You know, I don't want to get stuck nowhere. Folks getting stuck places. And you know, I ain't sticking nothing in my nose. I ain't, you know, I, you know me. I ain't doing nothing. I don't trust nothing they doing. So I just stay right here. I put on a video of overseas. I put on a 4K video of Dubai. And we'll just sit there and just look. Oh, yeah, this is nice. This is nice. A virtual tour. <laughs> I ain't getting stuck. We got, some, we got members here stuck places right now. Can't get back because all they got to do is test you positive. Love him with your life for adamandbeliever.com forward slash love him with your life for dot pdf. You can pull that up in your devices or you can follow along with your Bible. Somebody hit me this morning. See, brother, the reason I can't listen to you is because I don't see one single Bible in your congregation. The people don't have Bibles. What are they? They're supposed to just trust what you say. I said, brother, if they try to follow all the scriptures that I put in these documents, they would never look up. So I laid the scriptures out for them so they could take it home. Y'all got, who, who has a Bible at home? Amen. They go home. Y'all, do y'all go home and look up the... Oh, brother, but that's what cult leaders do. First thing they do is they get rid of the Bible. Who are you mad at? Who are you angry at? You hate your wife. It's got to be something. Adam and believe it. <laughs> so you can... Pull up the com compilation of the scriptures in this document, and it's going to help you and bless you later. Amen? Amen? From the time we are born, we are conditioned by society to achieve earthly goals and pleasures. It used to be when you were born, your mother and father would be telling you as you were growing up that you were going to be a good 
man, a good woman, a good father, a good mother. Now they tell you your occupation and your goals and how much money you're going to get before they even affirm your life. You affirm a person's life with their creation role. What God created them to be. That's why these folks are saying, I was born gay. I was born lesbian. I was born this way. Well, I don't know how you was born, but I do know you got to be born again. Amen. And you're saying that because somebody didn't affirm you. If they're born and you affirm their malehood, they'll grow up and want to be male. But instead of affirming their gender or their malehood or being a father or being a man, you told them what their occupation because you're trying to live vicariously through that. You're going to be a football player and bring money to us because my career didn't work out. I can't play good. <laughs> so you're trying to live vicariously through them. You didn't affirm who they were supposed to be. Tell them, oh, you're going to own a business. Baby can't hold his head up. You gonna hold a bit? You gonna own a bit? Man, will you call that boy a boy first? That's a girl first. Affirm him. But our society, they started this a long time ago. You know, the devil, it was just little bitty increments, just a little bit here and there from the time we were born. Job 35 and 13. Surely God will not hear vanity, neither will the Almighty do what? God is not thinking about those kind of plans. That has nothing to do with who he wants you to be. He wants you to be what he created you to be. Amen. He looked at man and said, man should not be alone. So I'm going to do what? Make him a what? A help meet. Those are creation. That's what you were created for. Now, whatever you do after that is fine, but what you do before that, you, you must be affirmed to do that, to be that man, to be that father, to be that mother. Amen. Many were told by their parents what, their, what they would accomplish financially and socially before they were encouraged to have character and follow God's plan. Yeah. What you're going to accomplish financially. Oh, you're going to be the savior of the family. Why are you telling an eight-month-old that? <laughs> you're going to be rich. You're going to be, oh, you got all the stuff I couldn't do. You're going to do. First Corinthians 2 and 12. Now we have received not the spirit of what? The world. Now what is the spirit of the world? What I'm talking about. The spirit of the world. The lust of the flesh. The lust of the what? I and the pride of life that's the spirit of the world that's you trying to shine in front of other folks that's you thinking you the bomb in front of other folks that's you trying to prove yourself to others that's the spirit of the world but the bible says we have received not the spirit of the world but the spirit which is of god that we might know the things that are what freely given to us god is not concerned about the stuff that costs money the things that are freely given to us. You were freely chosen to be a man. You're supposed to be a man. Why you got that wig on? Take that wig. You're a man. And you're fooling no one. Deep voice. Y'all see in the prison in California, they put a transgender man in the prison with the women and he got one of them pregnant. Oh. Y'all, I want to throw this bike. <laughs> you know how insane that is? <laughs> what you put it? What did I just say? I said, I identify as a, as a woman. I'm a, identified as a woman. You know, you identify with women. <laughs> he, that's, a, that's the player from the Himalaya. 
He done faked being a woman and everything that got up in the system. He done got, he done got behind bars with his Mac. I show them. It's lights out now, Rufus. Okay, okay. Lights go out. What you doing? <laughs> what happened to Rufus? What happened when the lights went out? <laughs> well, this dude done caught the whole government. Some foolishness. That is some foolishness, man. <laughs> because of personal deficits and traumatic issues, many parents push their children to fulfill worldly achievements. This is making it up because the Aenies got around and talked and was talking about whose kids was the smartest. And then you walked up. To show them you can speak Spanish. Y'all remember that. They want you to prove to everyone else that they did a good job. And that's their own personal deficit that causes them to use their children to prove themselves. Yes, that's a deficit. That's a deficit. And they push their children to fulfill these worldly achievements. In most cases, in these situations, the males rebelled and the females excelled. So you pushing the women and the women be, are, are large and in charge. You push the dude and he turned into a thug and a gangster. In the same house. I know I just preached. That's how the spirit of Jezebel works. Yeah. First Corinthians 11 and 3. But I would have you know that the head of every man is who? So what the devil was trying to do just from that was mess the order up. You mess the order up, you mess the world up. Every man, the head of every man is Christ, and the head of the woman is what? What did the Bible just say? Is the man, and the head of Christ is God. So you can't mess God's order up. Amen. Don't teach your daughter how to pile drive her husband. See, when he act up, this is what you do. What? You don't want to mess the order up, but that's what the New World Order wants you to do. That's why it's called the New World Order. It's not God's order, but it's the New Order of the Ages. Norvo Oros Clurum, what is on all y'all's money. The New Order of the Ages. Amen? This is what the New World Order wanted. They have created the perfect breeding ground for deception, disillusion, and emotional absurdities. It is absurd for a man to say he identifies as a woman and he's not one. That's, ab that's absurd for the president to have over the health and science a transgender. Isaiah 5 and 20, woe unto them that call evil good and good evil that put darkness before light, light before darkness that put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. That's the new world order. Yeah. Call evil good. Yeah. They let you identify as a man, but could care less about aborting a baby. Yeah. Got a whole pandemic with a 99.97% survival rate if you get COVID but 10 million abortions worldwide. Which one is the pandemic? Can I preach in here? People today are so focused on what they have. Now this is the problem. What they have or what they desire to have. Because if people are born with deficits and they're born, you know, they parents divorced or they feel abandoned or neglected or whatever, they're going to grow up with a deficit. This deficit is going to make them try to show out and have stuff and prove themselves their whole entire life. 
And so people are so focused on what they have or what they desire to have that they really don't know how to believe God. They don't know how to believe God. You can't believe God for vanity. You're just trying to show out you can't believe God for that. Oh, I'm going to walk around this Mercedes seven times and claim it in the name of the Lord. God is not walking with you. God don't care about no Mercedes. And who going to keep it up? You can't afford the oil change. Talking about seven times. You need to walk around auto parts store seven times. O'Reilly. Walk around O'Reilly seven times first. <laughs> Take back what the devil stole. <laughs> the devil did not steal your bins. You weren't supposed to have one and you're never going to get one. <laughs> Ain't nothing wrong with that. That's a car. You want me to get up here and promise you, oh, God is going to, oh, he's going to elevate you. That's not elevation. Not to God. What you drive is elevation. That makes you better what you drive. They never, they have never trusted God with health. So they do not know how to believe him for healing. That's why they're scared. Y'all see them, the gospel art, the preaching, everything, just pushing everyone to get the vax. Turning their churches into vax centers. Telling you all to get it. Aren't we supposed to trust what? They can't trust God for healing because they never trusted him with their health before. You drunk a big gulp every day. You ain't trusting God with your health. You use Shasta for communion. You ain't trusting God with your health. <laughs> Sodas and you're not trusting God with your health. And then as soon as the illness come, these are the folks that are scared to death. <laughs> They live in fear with no discernment of wicked men that prosper from their illness. You know how much they made off the vaccine? Moderna made $18.9 billion. You think they won't sacrifice some humans for that? $18.9 billion, Delvin! How much a billion is? You're going to trust them with your health. Big Pharma, they make money to make you sick. They have nothing that cures anything. They don't provide cures for anything. God built your body to cure itself. If you put the right thing in your body, your body will heal itself. You can reverse all kinds of stuff just by reversing your lifestyle. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But nothing big pharma sales is going to cure you. God made sure of that. He wants that power. He's not sharing that power with anybody. I preach in here. I don't care how you're looking. Amen. Because I know it's the truth. It happened to me. They gave me all kind of drugs and I lost my mind. My wife would tell you. I didn't sleep for two weeks. You ever miss 14 days of sleep? I was crazy. My kids thought I was going to die. I thought I was praying to die. They gave me medication and my body couldn't, you know, I can't take medicine. I just can't take, I can't take anything because my body just does something really, really weird. And God explained, well, he revealed to me what that is. It's because I carry so much of what people tell me and so many people's private business and all of that, I just can't go under anything to make me start talking. You understand? I, I gotta always be in control of myself. So when I tried to take pharmaceutical drugs and stuff like that, they had an adverse reaction because my body was fighting them and my spirit was fighting them so that they wouldn't make me compromise what God has called me to do. You understand what I'm saying? I know that's too deep for some folks, but. That's what happened. So I'm just up at night. I can't sleep. I'm going just, just going crazy. They were praying for me day and night. And then when I finally got to my doctor, or got to the new doctor, the holistic doctor, whatever, he told me, he said, man, I'm going to give you what your body needs to heal itself. Took a whole year. Had to lose 70 pounds in a year. 
and I dropped it. My wife tell you, whatever they tell me to do, I'm going to do it. Whole house going to suffer. Ain't that right, Landon? Whole house. <laughs> whatever I'm eating, that's what everybody going to eat. <laughs> but, but I had to. I had to. I, I just, that's what I had to do. And what he gave me, help. What I'm taking that still help. Keeps my body. They give me what I need. Two, beloved, I wish above all, how much is all? All, all things that you will what? Prosper. prosper. So God don't have a problem with you prospering. Don't get me wrong. He don't have a problem with you having a Benz if you have one and can afford it. Amen. 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 They can get the oil changed. <laughs> don't have a problem with that. A problem with what you driving. A problem where you live, and you don't have a problem. You just can't make that who you are. You got to be able to function without it. God might tell you to get rid of it. Man, I had a real nice car, Eddie, when we was in the old building. Man, I loved it, that car. And the Lord spoke to me and said, get rid of it. Because you got to build the building out. Your church don't have no money. You got to pay for it. So I sold that car to build the church out. That's what he told me to do. And you know what God did? <laughs> don't, get, don't, 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 don't get me started. Because <laughs> I wasn't expecting anything in return. I'm just like, hey, take it. If that's for the kingdom, take it. Whoa. <laughs> Look at somebody say, God is a good God. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> so he don't have a problem with you prospering but he said I wish above all things these three things there's three things <laughs> he wants you to prosper or he, he wishes above all things that you prosper and be what be what in hell. In hell. so anything you put in your body that has side effects is not healthy you know what a side effect is? That's your body saying, this doesn't belong here. That's what a side effect is. You tolerating a side effect to take something, basically, you're <laughs> robbing from Peter to pay Paul. You're basically putting another condition in you to try to fix a condition. Does that make any sense? That's a money loop. Somebody's getting paid. Well, I used to struggle with schizophrenia, but, uh, you know, now I'm taking these drugs. And I ain't schizophrenic no more, but I do have suicidal thoughts. <laughs> Bruh. <laughs> Amen. And see, when I was on it, I was only on it those 14 days. I took, no, I was only on it for like a couple of weeks. I stopped taking it, and it took me 14 days to kick it. I was like Ray in the bed. Just, I mean, I was kicking it. It was real drugs. That's when I learned it was real drugs. Those are real drugs. I had to kick them. So let me give this disclaimer. If you've been taking pharmaceutical drugs for X amount of years, don't you come, don't, 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 don't hear this message and say, hey, throw them away. You better use some wisdom. You might have to lessen the dose. You might have to get, a, get counsel from some, something. Amen. Because you took it for so long, your body got used to it, your body's conditioned for it. So when you stop taking it, yeah, it's going to be tough. You got to give the disclaimer. Amen. But he said, I, you, I want you to prosper, be in good health, even as thy what? So nothing is more important than your soul. Their desires are not based in God's will for them. This is why it's so easy to manipulate people into injecting themselves experimentally. What about experiment don't you understand? They're letting you know, oh, it's an experiment. And nobody's liable. The only person liable is you. Well, what if it, it's an experiment. So I can't sue the doctor? No. Can't sue the manufacturer? No. Nope. Can sue the hospital? No. Nope. Who can I sue? Yourself. Because you're responsible. It's experimental. Why, 
did they just use animals? They did. And it killed all of them. All of them. After all, if your life's goals and desires are the only things you are living for, then you will risk life itself to achieve them. So folks don't care about an experiment. I got to achieve what I set out to achieve. Their life is about goals. Got to make this money. I got to be, I got to do this. I got to do that. But people going to think I don't have nothing. People going to think I'm a failure. So I'll experiment with life itself to achieve. My own goals. James 2 and 14. What does it profit, my brethren? Though a man say he have faith and have not works. Can faith save him? You don't have works of your faith. You don't trust God. You're trusting in yourself. You're trusting in pharmaceuticals. Oh, it's quiet in here. I will keep preaching like this till Jesus come. This is the new world. Order. I mean, you've heard this before. You're supposed to have faith. Oh, but you got to have wisdom, not your wisdom. Have faith without your wisdom. Have God's wisdom. How about God's wisdom? How about you just turning down that slice of cake twice a day? Look, somebody, ooh, sock it to me, Kay. It's socking it to you, all right. Brother, just walk by it. Every now and then. Take the stairs instead of the escalator and the, and the elevator. Take the stairs. Ooh, you, ooh. Take the stairs. Get your heart moving, man. That's works with faith. I believe God was going to heal me when I was in that bed. Felt like I was going to die and all that. Holy Spirit spoke to me, will him. They were all praying. They cared. It's like, dude, you're going to live. Through. So once I got the faith I needed, I was like, okay, then I just got to live past this. Had every symptom I had before. But I looked at it differently. I looked at it like, okay, so now my body is getting rid of this stuff. So I got to get the stuff out of my body. I got to do my part. I got to change what I'm eating. Got to change my sleep habits. I got to change everything. I used to travel the whole world. I was traveling in all the continents except for Antarctica. I was everywhere, traveling, going places, just speaking, all the different countries, just all of this stuff, and could care less about my health. So when I started getting adrenal fatigue and my health started going down, and the elder was with me on a lot of trips, we had stopped at Dunkin' Donuts and get me the number one. <laughs> the large coffee and two donuts for me to preach. Because I needed that kick, I needed that energy. After I finished preaching, I would crash and burn. They would almost have to come and carry me to the car. When I didn't care about my health. I'm just thinking, I'm just, I'm doing the work for the Lord. This is for the Lord. I might as well do it. I need to do it. But I was tearing my body up. I had faith. I didn't have no works. So I take responsibility for my health and make sure, and I have to do it now. So I go to the gym, I ride my, I do all I need to do to maintain my body's integrity so I can get up here and preach and not crash. I speak to almost everybody in here after service now. Play, I play in the bad beginning and end of service. But I got to work during the week for that energy. You don't have to amen this. I know it's the truth. Life without God's plan is vanity. Period. How good you think you look and all the things you have. Without God's plan is vanity. Now, according to King Solomon, whose net worth was equivalent to 22 trillion American dollars. <laughs> Is there 22 trillion of anything now? He was the richest man ever. 22 trillion? So I'm going to listen to him. He sounds like he kind of know what he's doing. So according to this man, 22 trillion dollar man, nothing in this life even matters because when you die, you can't take it with you.
Ecclesiastes 1 and 3. What profit hath a man of all his labor which he hath taken under the sun? So what, what, what profit is it to have it all, to have everything? What did you profit? When you die, all you can take with you is what you have done for the Lord in this life. You know, the prosperity gospel tried to spin it. Oh, but if I had the 22 trillion, oh, I could reach out and help people and bless others and get these. Oh, I can go out to the countries that don't have no TV and I could set up camps and boot camps and camps with kids and children and feed the hungry. That ain't what you want that money for. You're just a lie. No. Oh. When you die, all you can take with you is what you have done for the Lord in this life. If you live your life for your own benefit, goals, dreams, and accolades, then you have nothing to take with you to the grave. You know you got to have something to take with you to the grave? You better. You better have God's plan with you when you die. Uh, you better die in God's plan if you plan to be risen with him. You can't put the bins in the cemetery. Die with the key fob in your head. No. Can't take the money. You can't take any of it. Psalms 49 and, 9 and 12, nevertheless, man being in honor about it not. He is like the beast that perish. So when we're living, we're loved by God, we're special. But when we die, we're just like animals. We don't matter anymore when we're dead. He ain't taking it with you. Can I keep going? Oh, this is hard. See, folk don't like to preach from Ecclesiastes. Because Solomon had too much sense. So when he said it, you have to listen because you didn't have as much as he had. The church bought into the prosperity doctrine and raised up believers' desires to seek after worldly things. The whole church became about what you can get from God. If you give, he's going to give you. And what gets on the head is going to get on the beard and get on the rest of the congregation. So y'all get the pastor a Rolls Royce and you're going to have a nice car. And uh, just prosperity gospel. Name it and claim it. You all in Nordstrom. Oh, that's mine. I'll take one of those. I'll take one of those. I'll take it. Fill up the whole basket. I'll take one of those. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then get up to check out. Okay, so it's going to be $1,200. It's mine, though. Now, I might not leave here with it now. Because <laughs> if I do, you're going to arrest me. But it's mine. I'll be back. I'll be back. In Jesus' name. You done watched some foolishness. None of that matters. Clothes, all of that. But the, this is what they did with the prosperity doctrine. We're supposed to look the part. We're supposed to show the world what God can give you. Church bought into the prosperity doctrine and raised up believers. Desire to seek after worldly things. Now those very things they sought after are tempting them to become genetically modified and controlled by the enemy. So I got to do what to keep my money? Keep up appearances? First John 2 and 15. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. That's why I love the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, what happens? The love of the Father is what? Not in him. Summary! Oh, I call message. But that's okay, it's the truth. Look at somebody say, it's the truth anyhow. Yeah, that's what I'm supposed to do. You're not supposed to feel good after every sermon. We need to evaluate this stuff. 
Because these are the things they're going to tempt us with. Amen. Your very desire to have something. To go somewhere. That's right. The Bible said they're going to cause all to receive the mark of the beast. Cause? Not force. Cause. They're just practicing now. It's time to make the main thing the what? <laughs> the main thing. I was talking to somebody. I think, who was that? I think it was Gerard. I was talking to Gerard the other day. And I was telling him about my wife and my family. And I was like, man, we got to keep the main thing the main thing. Like, I got to be good with my family and just being with the people that I love. That's more fun than a football, basketball game, a stadium, or the movies, or whatever they shut down and say you can't go to, you can't do. Man, you better learn to have fun with the people you love. And quit having fun with the Illuminati. That's the problem. You done fell in love with all the Illuminati stuff. You take my season tickets away, I don't have to go to them games, no way. You take my tickets, man, we'll have fun at home. We will play Uno. There's like 50 different variations of Uno now. They got all kind of Uno, the, the, the triangle cards and the, cir the, the, the circle cards. And that. Draw 10, draw 20, draw 50. <laughs> Big card, little cards. So they got little microscopic cards. You got to play with one of them, I think. So draw two. But we will have fun, man. You better learn how to have fun. And, and quit calling everything the world does fun. Hey, man, remember when you used to talk? That's why they stopped families from talking. Everybody walk around just... Oh, 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 you here? I didn't know you was in the house. Yeah. And that's what they're going to manipulate you with. They're going to tell you something is wrong with this gospel I'm preaching on that device. It's time to make the main thing the main thing. What is the main thing in this life? Everything under the sun is vanity. God's plan for you, you know the part that doesn't include riches, fame, and no applause of men, is what is important. Yeah. Forget the riches, forget the fame, forget the accolades, forget everybody saying you this and that. Then you'll have what's important to God. Yeah. You. The things that do not include vanity or self-glorification is all that is important in this hour. The day is coming where you will be challenged to keep your name and status in exchange for your soul. You will be tempted to accept the mark of Satan and reject God in order to maintain your worldly accommodations. Can I tell the truth in here? Y'all all right with the truth, right? Okay. Yeah, it don't feel good, but you know that day is coming. Especially if you watch the news. You watch the news, then I don't know what's wrong with you. The news lies. I had somebody see me the other day, just a, just a couple days ago, man, what's going on in Texas? I said, what do you mean? Man, I heard that you can't even get an ambulance anymore. <laughs> you can't get an ambulance anymore. Yeah, if you call them, they tell you, say, man, we don't have any available because they're picking up all the Delta, uh, the Delta variant people. They all busy out in the streets. I said, man, the last time I heard an ambulance siren blowing, right. what? what? So you can get an ambulance? Man, quit watching the news. They can say anything on the news. The people that's controlling all of this stuff that's going on right now in our world, they're all Satanist. You fall in love with their stuff. 
They got you. Why would a Satanist tell the truth? Why would the Satanists care about your health? You think they really care? Oh, if you do this, you, you're helping the other person. I tweeted that the other day. I said, well, if, 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 if me taking a vax is going to help somebody else, the next time I see somebody eating McDonald's, I'm going to slap it out their hand. <laughs> if I'm going to help your health. If I'm concerned about your health. They showed a vax commercial, then a the McDonald's commercial right after it. Seven Eleven, the gulp so big now. What do they call it now? The bucket gulp. <laughs> Straw look like a pipe. <laughs> Just a big PVC pipe. <laughs> Take you ten minutes to fill it up. <laughs> and they don't care. Take it all. Take it all, one cup, one charge. We don't care. We don't care what you bring in there. You can bring a big basin in there. <laughs> Just whatever. Well, however much you want, we have it. It's just 39 cents, all you can drink. 39 cents, I don't care what you put under there. <laughs> but they care about your health. <laughs> the things that do not include vanity or self-glorification is all that is important in this hour. The day is coming where you will be challenged to keep your name and status in exchange for your soul. You will be tempted, I gotta read this again, to accept the mark of Satan and reject God in order to maintain your worldly Accommodation. So you can keep showing out in front of everyone, you're going to have to take Satan's mark to look like you have something. What is important to you? What matters in this life to you? Are you, I mean, are the opinions of man, accomplishments of self, and achieving your goals more important than your soul? This question is easy to answer. If you are worried about not having things, not having access to places, or not being accepted by mainstream society, then your faith and confidence is in your own ability. Amen. That means that you are living outside of the plan of God. But if your own life is not even your concern, Paul said, I die daily. If your own life is not even your concern and you no longer desire what this world has to offer you, then you are close to God. And he is the main thing in your life. You're going to miss God because of people's opinions? What people might say and think? Ecclesiastes. This is Solomon. And I'm going to close. I made me great works. I builded me houses. I planted me vineyards. I made me gardens and orchids. And I planted trees in them of all kinds of fruits. I made me pools of water. He had swimming pools back then. To water therewith the wood that bringeth forth trees. I got me servants and maidens and had servants born in my house. Also, I had great possessions of great and small cattle above all that were in Jerusalem before me. I gathered me also silver and gold and the peculiar treasure of the kings. The stuff don't nobody even know about and of the provinces. I got me men singers and women singers and delights of the sons of men as musical instruments and that of all sorts. He just had an orchestra playing. I was great and increased more than all that were before me in Jerusalem. Also, my wisdom remained with me. And whatsoever mine eyes desired, I kept not from them. 
I withheld not my heart from any joy. Man, I did everything. For my heart rejoiced in all my labor. And this was my portion of all my labor. And after all of that, he says, Then I looked on all the works that my hand had wrought, and on the labor that I had labored to do. And behold, all was what? Vanity. Vanity and vexation of spirit. And there was no prophet under the sun. Everyone stand to your feet. You got to let go of these dreams and what you think you want to have and who you think you want to be and what people might say and what people think of you and how you look in front of your family and your relatives and Facebook and Instagram and people's opinions and you gotta let it all go because it's about to cost you something. Are you gonna stand for God in this last hour? Are you ready to say what Solomon says? Nothing else matters. All is vanity. It's not worth it. It's not worth me selling my soul for. Are you ready to do that? You, got, you better be. The day is coming where nothing else is going to matter but the main thing. Wow. Everyone bow your heads. Anyone struggling with letting go of the world and just getting this worldly spirit out of you and I don't know how you grew up. I don't know what was told to you. I don't know who you thought you were or what they said you might be or whatever, but you just want to make sure that if the day, if I'm before the choice, if I get the choice, if the day comes where I have to make the choice, God, I'm going to choose you if you need strength in that, I want you to just come up and you want to just get the spirit of the world off of you. Somebody probably spoke it on you. Somebody told you that or whatever it was. I mean, we just, we, you know, we don't want it. Just dealing with who you are and being content with what you have. and Loving who God made you. Who he made you to be. Not chasing somebody else's dream. Chasing someone else's opinion of you. Chasing someone else's desire for you. But you want to live with confidence. Confidence in this hour. That who God created you to be is good enough. It's good enough. It's good enough. It's, if it's good enough for God, it's good enough. You don't have to impress anyone. You don't have to be like anyone. You don't have to shine, prove. You don't have to upload that post and upload that picture and show people this and that. And then sit and wait, looking at the comments to see who's going to say what, who's going to approve, who's going to disapprove so you can defend yourself. We're not about that. It's all vanity. And in this last hour, only the main thing should matter. Anyone else? Everyone just bow your heads. Father God, we just thank you, Lord. First, just thank you, God, for this word. Though parts may be comical and we have a good time learning in here, we understand the severity of what is spoken even by King Solomon who you gave him the opportunity to get anything he could from you, and he chose wisdom. You gave him riches because he didn't choose riches. And God, we want to be like that, God. We want whatever you, whatever you give us to be because you decided we should have it. You decided we could handle it. So I pray right now, Father God, that all discontentment in the hearts of these people that have come God, that you would deal with that discontentment. You would deal with whatever was spoken to them. Father God, that they would be able to overcome the opinions of others and be willing to give up all for you. Help us, God, in this hour, Lord, where serious decisions are being made. They are threatening and constantly threatening on what they're going to do if we don't conform or won't do what they say, whatever it is. But God, we trust you. But I pray right now that you would teach us how to trust Teach us how to love you more than anything. Teach us how to love you with our lives, God. 
Teach us how to love you more than things, more than places, more than possessions, more than anything they can dangle in front of us to try to persuade us. Teach us, Father God, how to love you more and not love the world. How to let go of the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, the pride of life. Forgive us, God. For even putting these things before our love for you. Forgive us God for even putting these things. Making these things important in this hour. All that is important is you. And the main thing. Who you created us to be. So God strengthen each and every person. Come on lift your hands. Strengthen each and every person. Each and every person. Every father. Every mother. Everyone that is earning an income. Strengthen them in this hour God. Don't let them believe a lie. Let them know the truth. Let them make a decision based on nothing but truth. Give them the information they need. Give it to them. Speak to their heart, Lord God. Tell them what needs to be done. Father God, let them stand for you in this hour. And we will be your ambassadors. We will be those that will stand. We will be those that won't conform. We will be those that will refuse any mark of Satan and any of his devices in this last hour. Father God, this is why we serve you. We serve you for this time. We serve you to stand in this time. We're going to stand in this hour. Faith over fear. And we're going to trust and believe in your word. And believe that you're going to see us through this hour. In the name that is above every name, we pray. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Come on and give God a praise. Trust and believe. You know, the best way to get some of this world out of you is to just start turning stuff off now. Start getting rid of stuff now. Stop. Just start making things just not matter. Reconditioning yourself to just tell the world no. Because you're not going to be tempted by the world. Amen. Look at somebody and say, I'm not going to be tempted by this world. Come on, hug somebody up here and say, I'm not going to be tempted by this world. I'm good with who God made me to be. I'm good. I'm good. If I drive a Benz, I'm good. If I drive a bucket, I'm good. If it's a horse and a buggy, if I'm catching the bus, I'm good. We're going to all probably be catching the bus. Amen. Come on and give God a praise again. Where's Elder? Don't leave. It's offering time. Don't you leave.